Coming up, Indonesia City volunteers began relief work for flood survivors in Kapmut Murara and Manado. In Kuiming, China, recycling concepts takes root in locals as city volunteers attracts many to participate. Welcome to Da Headlines, I'm Mary Lee, thank you for joining us. Recent torrential rains have affected different regions of Indonesia, flooding many residents' homes and forcing them to flee. In Jakarta, city volunteers prepare relief supplies, medicine and 5,000 hot meals for flood survivors. In Kaput Murara, meanwhile in Manado, North Sulawesi, another team of city volunteers began cleanup work and medical free clinics. After torrential rains wreaked havoc in Manado, North Sulawesi, the muddy streets remain filled with abandoned and broken furniture. On the second day since their arrival, Jakarta City volunteers have already started with a disaster survey and a cleanup of the streets. Because the rain will continue to pour, so if we don't remove the mud now, when the mud hardens, it will fill into the sewers and clog up the pipes, thus causing more flooding. Although the rotten smell on the streets is close to unbearable, volunteers nevertheless do their best to help clean up and as a result, inspire local residents to help out. City volunteers are really selfless because I know Jakarta is suffering from flooding right now as well, yet these volunteers are still willing to travel a long distance to help us. Another team of volunteers, including three team of doctors, heads to a local church, which is being used as an emergency shelter to conduct health checks on those staying there. We need to be proactive in seeing patients because many of them are stuck at home unable to leave. There was a resident earlier who stepped on a nail and I asked him to come to our free clinic and he was unwilling. So I think home visits are a possibility for later. I'm very grateful that Manado has been able to receive Tsuji's assistance, especially since you have traveled all the way from Jakarta. On behalf of the residents of this town, thank you. Currently in Manado, North Sulawesi, 11 towns have been affected by the floods. City volunteers will continue to work with the local government and other organizations here to help local residents rebuild their lives. Meanwhile, in Jakarta, the kitchen at the Jing Si Hall is bustling with volunteers, preparing 5,000 hot meals for flood survivors. Besides hot meals, cold and gastrointestinal medicine is being prepared as well. Volunteers also neatly fold secondhand clothing, which will be handed out during future aid distributions. Some volunteers are Kamal Mu'ara residents who previously received Siji's help and are now here to reciprocate the love. Our community received Siji's help in the past. This time, thankfully, we were not flooded. So we decided to volunteer to help prepare eight items. I never knew how good it felt to help others. I am filled with joy to be a volunteer. Although I cannot give money, I can at least do something to help. It's a bit tiring, but I enjoy doing it. Volunteers then transport the relief supplies to Kaput Muara village for distribution. Kaput Muara was one of the most badly flooded areas, with 90% of the residents being evacuated. The flood waters were higher than me. I was so scared being at home alone that I cried. I've lived in Kaput Muara for 20 years, and every year it floods. Thankfully, Tsuji is here to provide hot meals for us. Representing the government of Jakarta, I want to say thank you to all the Tsuji volunteers. Thank you for the timely assistance. Also, a word of caution for residents. Even though the flood waters have receded, the rain is now over and waters will continue to rise. It will be best to evacuate to higher ground. Once again, the timely assistance from Tsuji volunteers has calmed residents' anxious hearts. After Typhoon Haiyan, over 90% of houses in Palo were ruined. Thus, city volunteers decided to organize three aid distributions to help local residents get back on their feet. Learning of city's upcoming event, local residents arrived early to wait, and several of them also brought filled bamboo coin banks to reciprocate city's help. 
Tsuji volunteers one after another unload boxes of Tsuji blankets, waiting up local residents who look forward to the upcoming event. Now I'm in Balas, Palo Town, Late Province. Today, Tsuji volunteers plan to hold three aid distributions in this basketball court. Up to 1,000 residents have been here since 5.30 waiting for Tsuji's relief supplies. Prior to the volunteers' arrival, everyone lines up to wait. The roof of the distribution venue was damaged in the typhoon, but has been temporarily fixed thanks to the volunteers who raced to get it done before the start of the distribution. Because there are no other venues that can accommodate so many aid recipients, and we fear that it might rain over these few days, so we use tarpaulins as a temporary roof. Here, the situation is similar to Tekloban, with nearly 95% of houses damaged. <laughs> Giving their neighbors a gentle massage, city volunteers lead aid recipients in group activities as a way to start the event. Dear friends in the Philippines, sa November, ang pagsapit ng Bagyong Yolanda. City volunteers first read Mr. Zheng Yan's letter to the residents, hearing Mr. Zheng Yan's words. Rowena Celote is among the many who are moved to tears. She says the terror of the typhoon still lingers in her heart. Suji's arrival gave us a great hope because we still need a lot of help, especially with our homes. When we learned that you had arrived in Tacloban, we desperately hoped that you could come to Palo too because we need your help. Receiving love and warmth from global city volunteers, local residents find that their pain and loss vanishes. After hearing of Tsuji's bamboo coin bank campaign in Tagloban, Palo residents decide to reciprocate in the same way. Marlene Nablo, despite losing her home, is one of the many that takes the chance to reciprocate. I want to reciprocate too. I also want to help those who are in greater need. I heard that you will go to other places to help more people in need. I bought money here because I could help people. My nephew told me that we should make donations too. We can tell that they sincerely want to give. It is truly admirable to see them travel long distances to donate their love to help those who are worse off. With Tsuji's blankets, consolation cash, as well as the volunteers' warmest hugs, the A recipients finally can quiet their restless hearts. My husband drives a rickshaw for a living and needs money to repair it so that we can get by in this difficult time. I'm happy to be here because I can get cash to repair his vehicle. I have my own business selling fruits and vegetables. Thanks to the volunteer support, these disaster survivors are able to find strength to get through the hardship and look forward to better days ahead. To help Typhoon Haiyan survivors get back on their feet, Tsuji volunteers organized the distribution in Tanawan to provide affected families with relief items and consolation cash. Inspired by the volunteers' selflessness, the disaster survivors also brought cash to donate to help those less fortunate. 71-year-old Victoria lives alone and has lost contact with the children over the years. This is where she has been staying following Typhoon Haiyan. Each time it rains or when the wind begins to blow, the senior becomes frantic with worry. It's difficult staying here because whenever there are strong winds, I cannot get a good night's sleep. It feels as if the tent will get blown away, especially when it rains, rainwater will seep in and the floor gets wet. With her home gone and without the means to rebuild, just as Victoria was worrying where she would get money from, help came from afar. Arriving at City's distribution venue, the event has just begun and Victoria's eyes are already welling up with tears.
I feel like crying because help actually came. I can't believe it. Even if I'm no longer around, I know you will be here to care for our people. Thank you. What is it that has residents so moved? That they're willing to give before they have even received? And because we love them. They're, they're, already, they're also needy like us. What is it that has a film crew from Beijing volunteer their assistance? I'm happy. It feels great to be able to help others. What brought a businessman from Takloban to Tanawan to help local residents here instead of rebuilding back home? I'm a local businessman. I saw how Tsiji volunteers are helping the local people. The Philippines is our second home, and this place is very dear to us. So when the opportunity arises, of course we should step forward and offer our assistance. Volunteers not only hand out blankets, consolation cash, and a consolation letter from Master Zheng Yan, they are also here to deliver blessings from around the world. Residents break into smiles as they can feel the volunteers' genuine respect and care. I am truly thankful. I love you all very much. When asked whether it was because of the monetary assistance she received that has her so moved, Victoria shakes her head and says, Ang pagmahal nyo sa amin, yung pagkapunta nyo dito sa amin, na may nagmalasakit sa amin. Ang kauna-unahan ko... You kind-hearted people came here and gave us your love. We will relay this love to more people. Personally writing down her thanks to Tsiji, although the journey to recovery is not easy, at least Victoria will have the loving care of Tsiji to accompany her along the way. Concerned about the health and well-being of Typhoon Haiyan survivors, Tsiji volunteers organized free medical clinics in Tanawan. This time, with the help of Tsiji volunteers from Manila and Cebu, medical supplies and equipment were transported to the venue. And on January 20th, team of doctors and volunteers returned to Tanawan once again, this time serving residents with dental needs. All kids love their cookies and candy. Come break time, they rush off to buy some. Unfortunately, none of them have good dental habits. Toothaches are a common problem here, and it is even more common that residents let the pain go on for several months. It doesn't hurt that often, but sometimes it hurts, and uh, I can't sleep the, in the night. 15-year-old Jerry has been suffering from a toothache for three months now. Why did you go to the even though her toothache is unbearable, when she found out she had to have her tooth removed, Erica couldn't hold back the tears. She was smiling so brightly before she came and sat in this chair. When you see the doctor, you think he's a, you see he's such a good doctor, there's no need to be scared, right? right? The doctor will take good care of you. You can just trust him, okay? With poor oral hygiene awareness and medical resources lacking here, patients' teeth are being removed one after the other inside the clinic. First-time participant of the free clinic, Taipei City Hospital dentist Xia Yiran had some suggestions. There's a little bit of bleeding in one day. That's the normal condition. Don't be afraid of that. Do you understand? Okay, good. In Taiwan, these cavities can be treated, but because they have no money to get a filling here, their only option is to pull the teeth out. But by doing that, the other teeth start to shift over time. Many of them are only 11, 12 years old. I think it's important for public health agencies to intervene and teach oral hygiene. A dentist couple from Sweden, upon learning of the free clinic, immediately signed up to take part. With a heart to serve, even while working in a harsh environment, the couple's smiles never fade. I, could, I couldn't um, uh, lift it. It was loose, but I couldn't lift it. So I needed some assistance in just pushing it the right way. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> and I couldn't see anything because I was so hot. I'm, I'm so grateful to be here, to be able to help out. But I'm also sad because the teeth are in such bad condition that we need to lift them out. And um, 
so many young people lose their teeth very early. Knowing how desperate disaster survivors are for dental care, the Tima team decided to hold a second free clinic in Tanawan on January 20th. <laughs> Outside the school gate, the former Taiwanese Minister of Transportation and Communications, who is also a city volunteer, invites passers-by to come inside to receive a medical checkup. During the pre-preparations, whether it was air transport or shipping, I took part, but after all, it was mainly the logistics. It's very different from frontline work. I learned to appreciate and cherish my blessings, so this is an opportunity for me to cultivate even more blessings. Seeing the extent of the devastation here, it's much worse than I imagined. Seeing the smiles on the disaster survivors' faces and the optimism despite their difficulties, city volunteers have taken it upon themselves to help reduce the burden that these disaster survivors carry. More than two months after Typhoon Haiyan first struck, city volunteers who were among the first to arrive in Tacloban to assist with disaster relief now return once again to check on their old friends. They were warmly greeted by local residents and it seemed hope has returned after all. A large freight liner has been washed on shore in the Bay of Annabong since November 8, 2013. When volunteers clad in blue and white uniforms show up again, they discover a tragic tale. So the one who was leading them was struck by a plank of wood. Dodalfo Sabala has not only lost his home, his wife and two daughters were pulled into sea when Typhoon Haiyan struck. Rebuilding with the consolation money from the Tsuji Foundation, he now stays in his shack with his brother. Waves continue to wash ashore, but what is gone is gone. At least the presence of a new life has made the tragedy a little bit more bearable. Skillfully utilizing her visitation skills, volunteer Luo Meizhu tries to convey Tsuji's compassion. <laughs> Upon seeing Tsuji volunteers again, Residents smile and give a thumbs up. Tsuji Philippines chapter director Alfredo Lee happily smiles back and talks with the residents. The banner of this home says thanks to Tsuji. Now they can stand up again. Since setting foot on Tacloban, Tsuji volunteers have now become a part of this land. As long as children continue to smile, as long as people do not give up, there will be hope here. In China's Kunming, Tsuji volunteers often promote recycling at popular tourist sites, one being Cuihu Park. Over the past year, with the park's permission, volunteers have periodically organized recycling campaigns at the Haixin Pavilion, attracting numerous tourists and local residents to, to their cause. In addition, Tsuji volunteer Lin Zhi Hong, a food company owner, has also applied Tsuji's green concepts to his company's operation. Every winter, tens of thousands of black-headed gulls flock to Treihu Lake. Tourists can appreciate the fish in the water at a pavilion built by the lake. The images of bridges and green trees reflected on the water's surface completes the beauty of the picture. At this popular tourist site, trash and litter can be a problem. However, thanks to park authorities, the area has remained clean. Joining them in their efforts are Kunmin Tsuji volunteers who have been promoting recycling at this 300-year-old heritage site, the Haixin Pavilion. As the park authorities share Tsuji's recycling ideals, they granted us the right to use this premise. We can use the grounds on the both sides to collect PED bottles, cans, papers, batteries, clothing, electronic products, etc. Through our regular campaigns, several international students will periodically bring PED bottles and newspapers here to us. Currently, the Haixin Pavilion is under restoration, but Tsuji volunteers continue their recycling mission in various other ways. Tsuji volunteer Lin Zhihong, a food company owner, applies Tsuji's green philosophy to his business operations. 
This is conventional practice in the food industry. After you wash your hands, you shouldn't touch faucets. So as we wash our hands, we use this pedal to control the flow of the disinfectant water. In addition to saving water and electricity, the factory regularly clears away waste items. Such practices have not gone unnoticed. He said that he has been in the garbage collecting industry for several years and has never seen a factory which can carry out garbage sorting as efficiently as we can. He said it's easier to process the sorted garbage from our factory. And he recommended that we go out and promote our recycling practices to our counterparts so they can learn the benefits of sorting recyclables too. The company not only practices recycling but also educates their consumers through not using excessive packaging and the reuse of packaging materials. Now most food companies are more aware of the importance of environmental protection and will reuse packaging materials. Unlike decades ago, businesses in China have learned that excessive packaging is detrimental to our environment. No one wants to see the depletion of the world's resources, and no one wants to live in a dirty and messy environment. Thankfully, through local government's educational programs and city green campaigns, popular tourist sites in Yunnan have been able to remain pristine. In Taiwan's Kaohsiung, as Zhonglu Elementary School was going through renovation and faced a shortage of classrooms, the city foundation agreed to build five prefabricated classrooms for the students. Upon completion of these classrooms, a ceremony was held to thank the foundation. To thank Tsiji for providing five prefabricated classrooms during the school's renovation, students welcomed their guests with a drumming show. Zhonglu Elementary is a century-old school, so the buildings are old and need renovation. The master agreed right away to provide prefab classrooms to make up for the insufficient classrooms. The master knows that education must come first for students. For that, I am really grateful. These classrooms were first used at Yujin Junior High School following the 2010 Jiaxian earthquake. Students and teachers are happy to give the classrooms a second lease on life and all want to pay the love forward. We can help underprivileged families. I hope the money will go towards helping the needy. Each classroom offers a space of 42 square meters and is water and insect proof. They can also be taken down and reassembled, which is in itself a profound lesson for students and teachers. At the end of today's show, we go to the United States, where U.S. City volunteers invited teachers from Tijuana's Burrito City School in Mexico to the Taiwan Center in San Diego, California, for a year of blessing ceremony. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Dial Headlines. Goodbye.